Now, um, today we're going to demo gravy and potatoes, mashed potatoes, and a pie crust. And these are all, all healthy versions of what we normally eat. So I hope you enjoy them. They're not going to be the same exactly as what you're used to, but try them and see what you think, see if you like it. And of course, you can take the recipes home and tweak them if you want to. So... Um, before we get started here, I would like to have an opening prayer. So let's all um, bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all the abundance of the fruits and vegetables and grains and legumes that you've given us. Thank you for the healing properties in these foods. And we ask that you will be with us today as we share our um, ideas. And they, some of these cooks have shared their expertise and we just pray that you will bless us and bless us with your presence today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so um, Fran and Arlen are going to do some demos. Fran will demo the gravy. Arlen's going to demo the potatoes. And I'm going to demo uh, a pie crust. So we'll get started here. Hello. Um, Arlen will be out here in a minute. He's waiting for his potatoes. <laughs> Welcome. I didn't get to hear all the interaction and um, questions, so but I am glad to see some really familiar faces. Hello, Daphne and Mary and Linda. <laughs> it's I got so used to you guys being in the class that if you weren't here, I could hardly do it. <laughs> okay. What I'm going to be doing is making the mushroom gravy. Did you all get a recipe sheet? And to start with, I'm going to start sauteing the mushrooms. Now, you can make this without the mushrooms and just leave it plain, but they just add a nice flavor to it. In fact, you can take this recipe... <clears throat> with the mushrooms, and I add to it a tablespoon of natural granulated mushroom seasoning. And then if you put it with your the, um, green beans, you know the green bean casserole that somebody came up with because they wanted to sell more green beans and mushroom soup? <laughs> um, and we all liked it. You can, it gives you that same kind of uh, dish without having to buy the mushroom soup um, in the can. You can control it yourself. And <clears throat> if you're interested in this, please take a picture because there are a lot of them that look almost identical that have a lot of different ingredients in it. And um, so just feel free to come up and check it. Okay, we're getting going. So this recipe starts with cashews for its... Um, Milk. Now, you could use almond milk, you could use soy milk, um, any milk, but the cashews make it a little bit um, richer, creamier. And these are from Costco, organic raw. You can buy just regular pieces at Winco in the bulk section, and I think it figures like a dollar cheaper a pound if you buy them like that at Winco. So it's cashews. And a half a cup of water. And the seasonings. Now, I used cornstarch. I buy um, the Bob's Red Mill. And, and the reason I do that is because if you're going to use cornstarch, I don't know how you feel about GMO things, but all other cornstarch 
unless it's organic, is GMO. And you can read it right on the container. It says bioengineered. Um, so I try to avoid that as much as possible. So in here is my cornstarch. You could use potato starch, which um, you can buy Bob's Red Mills potato starch, and it works out very nicely. You could even use some oat flour in here to thicken it. And that had my salt and my onion powder in it. And I'm going to get that going while that's going, and hopefully we don't trip anything. The object is to make it as smooth as possible. You don't want gritty gravy. And I have clean gloves, so I'm just going to, you can feel it if it's gritty, except now I have it on my finger. Um, and it's nice and smooth, so that didn't take very long. Also, I wanted to show you what that mushroom seasoning looks like. I don't know, where can they see it, Bill? Can, I don't know where it's at. Anyway, it's like granules. It isn't, it isn't a powder, it's a granule. Woo, I can't see. <laughs> I can. To my right? Yeah, because you can't see it in the mirror. How's St that? Stand to one side of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> While she's doing that, I need to apologize to my wife. I, I, I'm afraid I didn't embarrass her necessarily last time, but I, I made an allusion to the fact that whenever she's telling stories of our past history, that they're always different, even though it's the same story. <clears throat> and, then, and I had I no... I can't even see, so I can't even hear you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. I could just stop the apology right here. <laughs> No, keep going. It's music to my ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't. I didn't mean to damage her credibility in your eyes at all. She's uh, she's one of the smartest people I've ever had the pleasure of knowing, and uh, she's got a memory like a steel trap. She remembers her kindergarten teacher kindergarten teacher's name. I didn't go to kindergarten. See. <laughs> <laughs> I went to first grade. Yep. Yeah. We didn't know each other then. <laughs> So I'm what was the sorry. teacher's name? Mrs. Denson, and she got fired partway through because she was crazy. I rest my case. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyhow, I wanted to apologize because I, I didn't mean to damage her credibility in, in your eyes at all. So. Yeah, that is so kind. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're used to this at home, you see. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so after you've got that blended, you add another four cups of water to it, additional water. And then you let it thicken. And so today's menu is a lentil loaf, um, mashed potatoes with the mushroom gravy, salad with two dressings on it. Um, one is the recipe here, and I don't have the other recipe right now for the other one, so you'll kind of get a divided salad, you know, and um, then a cranberry relish on that dish, and then it's pumpkin pie for dessert. So, okay, I'll just let this thicken up as you go. Okay. How's that?
Oh, and also I wanted to tell you, last week, those maple sugared pecans, the walnuts, I told you they were walnuts. They were actually pecans, which you probably already figured out. And so I told Lorena, I said, I'll be sure and correct that today. And she goes, but I am using walnuts today. <laughs> so. I didn't taste them, so I didn't. So you you did the maple sugared walnuts last time, and no pecans. There you have it. It's like my mind is like a steel trap, right? <laughs> yes, I am. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. <laughs> I'm definitely definitely going to have to apologize again. I had a friend that used to say that all the time. My mind's like a steel trap. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. <laughs> all right, so for those of you that attended our earlier um, lifestyle classes, how long ago was that? Fall, last fall? April? My mind is not like a steel trap. <laughs> it, was a, it was not last fall, it was the fall before. Okay, so. Um, they actually, they let me boil water. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, then, and then I graduated, and they actually let me do the uh, hash brown demo. That's right, you did? Yep. Yeah. And uh, now, next step up, I'm doing mashed potatoes. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm working my way you, up the career ladder. You should ladder. maybe explain why you're doing those. Why am I? Why am I? Because you're so picky. Oh. <laughs> About your potatoes, yeah. I, there are good mashed potatoes, and then there are mashed potatoes, right? So we like to do our mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot. Um, we put them in with a cup and a half of water and fill it up to the, to the full line with the potatoes, but we quarter them and kind of dice them. We really we kind of want them all to be about the same size so that they cook evenly and consistently. Um, and it takes about 22 minutes in the Instant Pot to get them to the right spot. Now these are a yellow potato. I think these are Yukon Gold. Yeah, yeah they I are. I think they're Yukon Gold. And um, Yukon Golds make a great mashed potato, in my mind. Also, there's a steamer basket in the bottom, so the potatoes aren't sitting in the water. They're, just, they're in a basket, and the water's below. So one of the things I'm going to be demoing here is Didn't you say a cup and a half of water? A cup that, and a half in the water in the, in the bottom. And then this, there's a strainer pot that goes in on top of that. And then the potatoes go in on top of that. So we don't have potatoes sitting in the boiling water. Do you use salt in while you're cooking them? No, I never do. I always wait until I'm mashing them. And then, and that's mainly because I don't use much salt at all. Um, you know, on our oats in the morning, we put in like two pinches of salt. So I never know how salty to get the potatoes, um, mainly because we're often having company when we're doing mashed potatoes. And a lot of people that use a lot of salt are going to think, oh, these aren't salted enough. So it's, I always wait until the end, and then I have them sample the mashed potatoes before they go on the potato or on the uh, table. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the yeah, first thing I'm going to demo here is uh, the fact that this is a shallow bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and some of you are going to end up participating in the demo. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. That's why they're on the table. <laughs> That's good. I, you thought that was just a runner. Right? Yeah. This is, this is silk almond milk. Um, we like it. It's a little less fat than, so, than soy, I believe. Okay. Yeah, and there also, I should have brought, there's a carton in the fridge. It says um, 30 calories from 8 ounces, and this one's 60. But when you read the, the ingredient list, the one in there has a uh, lecithin, 
I don't remember if it's a sunflower. It has a fat added to it. So you're, um, you may be getting less calories, but you're actually getting more fat out of it. So that's why we do this one. So give it a good shake. Make sure everything's uh, stirred up well. And then I wish I could tell you how much to put on, right? But this is, this comes down to trial and error. And I found if you put too much on, it's tough to take it back out. Our daughters actually mash the potatoes with some of the potato water. They don't even put the um, milk in. It does make it a little bit richer with, you know, creamier. I'm going to start this up. I'm going to leave. Stand back. Okay. <laughs> I will say that if you mash too long, that you end up developing the starch in the potatoes, and you get potatoes that you can kind of pull up into a nice peak, and then it, it snaps back. <laughs> so you, gotta, you have to weigh the time that you're mixing versus how the texture is starting to look. Get extra points for doing this in a moving bowl. So at this point, I can tell that um, I don't have enough liquid in here. I don't know if you can see the texture difference here between here and the side. It, there's a smooth section in there. It should all be looking smooth and soft and creamy. And right now, it's still a little bit lumpy. So a little bit more plant milk. You know they say you kind of marry your has your dad. Well, do you, I, well some people say that obviously. And my dad was the potato masher at our house, and I remember one holiday when we had the table full of people, somebody volunteered to mash the potatoes, like one of my aunts, I think. And my we sit down to eat, and sometimes my dad's filters weren't real good, and he said, "Edith, who mashed these potatoes?" They're terrible. So my mom always made sure after that my father always mashed the potatoes. It was just easier. And I guess I got you, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, so these look good. Um, at this point, I'd salt it. Questions? If you end up with consistently, consistently lumpy potatoes, it's probably because you need to cook the potatoes more. Yeah, um, or cut them smaller. And so can you show them the, the thing? Oh. It is. Yeah, but you can do it in a regular pot. So that's the screen. So that's sitting in the bottom, right? So it keeps them out of the water. Also, I wanted to talk. Um, last week, I forgot to mention the pepper-like seasoning. Vegetarian Express is an online company out of Tennessee, and they specialize in um, animal-free seasonings and less irritating um, seasonings for your, your gut. And the pepper-like seasoning is to replace like black pepper. 
And that's what it looks like. Vegetarian Express, they also go under a logo of Spice 24 or something like that, but Vegetarian Express. And then the beef-like seasoning is another one we use in place of soy sauce. Um, and you, like for, say, a recipe called for two tablespoons of soy sauce, I would use one tablespoon of this to get that same mouth taste and avoid the soy sauce if you are trying to avoid soy or fermented products or salt. Right. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and while you're hopefully enjoying your food or you're starting to, they're getting some more plates out, I'm going to go ahead and demo the pie crust. So do you have the recipe in front of you? This, is, this was kind of scary for me because I had never made this recipe before last week and it doesn't use oil. So it's just using the nuts, the nuts that are, are ground up. Sorry. It says in the recipe Brazil nuts, but Fran told me you can use any nuts. You can use walnuts, pecans. I used walnuts for the one you're eating today. So um, hopefully you guys aren't allergic to walnuts. So what we did first was we made some oat flour. And the ones that we're serving you, they're gluten-free oats. And you can take any oats and put them in your blender and make an oat flour. So I'm going to do that first. It's really easy to do. You can see it's just, it just makes flour. And in the recipe, it, um, it calls for flour, and then it calls for quick oats later. I'm going to use this oat flour for both of those things, OK? So I'm going to just put the flour back into that container at first. Um, you can use other flours, too, if you want to. Okay, I know, I'm trying to do it right. Okay, so I'm using two-thirds a cup of, of walnuts, and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going to mix the flour in with the walnuts before, before I turn the blender on. So I've got, this will keep it um, nice. If you do it just the walnuts first, it'll just turn into butter, like a, a nut butter. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to put the salt in it as well at this point. So we've got salt, oat flour, and walnuts in there. So with the Vitamix, you can pulse it. You can go on and off. And that helps to distribute it real good. And then, so that's got your that's got your flour and your your walnuts all blended up together now. Okay. So in the recipe, then it says another half a cup of the quick oats, or you can use the you can use it already blended up. And what I I did at home when I made the pies is I just. I used my hand to stir it up. That works the best. All the salt didn't get in. So you just kind of like, like kind of like you would if you had oil and flour. You can just kind of play with it and blend it all up together with your hand like that. And then it says a fourth a cup or more or more of water. And what I found out when I made it, and of course it depends on how much moisture is in your oats. And how, how, what kind of nut you use, how much moisture is in your nuts. So you, you just carefully add the water. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm sorry, what? Did, say, did you say something? 
So you just you just keep working with it until it turns into like a pa a ball of pastry. There, there you can see it's forming a it's forming a ball now. It says a food processor, doesn't it? My food processor um, died on me last two weeks ago, so what? Yes, I am the food processor. And it fortunately it works with the with the Vitamix. It works fine. The same with the cranberry salad that you're you're eating. That can be done with a food processor, but since mine died and I was making it, I used the, the Vitamix to do that. Um, I cut some of it by hand, but most of it I just put small amounts in the Vitamix at a time and, and just pulse it. You don't want to make a mush. I mean, it, it's, it's a little, there are parts that, have, that, that is mushy, but you, you don't want it just to turn out mush. So you that's why you pulse it. You go on and off. Okay, there we've got our little ball of pastry. Now, this is the other tricky part, is rolling it out and putting it in the pie pan. And the way I do it is I have, I use um, a sheet of plastic wrap. This, um, the plastic wrap that we have here at the church is nice because it's a lot wider than the one I have at home. But if you don't have the wide one, just make two um, pieces and you put, you can put a little water on your countertop. Let me move this. You put a little water so that the, um, I don't know if it'll stick here, but it's that way it sticks to your countertop and it doesn't wiggle around. So I just stick it on kind of like that. There. And then you take your, your, your dough and you put the other sheet on top of it. And then you just roll it out like you normally would uh, a pie crust. It's not sticking onto it that well because it's not a it's a tablecloth, not a countertop. And you just want to roll it thin, like you, just like normal, like you would uh, any pie crust. The the walnuts in it are the are the oil, and they kind of give it the um, the richness that you, you kind of like. But but using walnuts or any kind of their kind of nuts and blending them is a lot less process than using oil. You, the, it had, the oil hasn't been getting rancid sitting on the shelf for two years in the store. And um, plus that, walnuts and other nuts as well have very good properties in them. They ha are high in antioxidants. The walnuts are really good for the brain. They help with all kinds of brain functions. Maybe Dr. Jim can tell us more about that later. I don't, I don't know if that's on his schedule today. Tip. Yeah. Walnuts should be kept in freezer as possible. Oh, to keep them they fresh. Do, they do go red. Yeah. Okay, now this is the tricky part. You take off the top plastic. Take off the top part and you put your pie pan on top of the other one. And you take a <laughs> a, a big breath. <laughs> and you flip it over. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's the scary part. And then I'm not going to go through the whole thing of, of doing the edges, but this pie, this pie crust, you, it, it's easy to fix. Okay, so you can see I tore a little right there. You can just fix it like that. And then, of course, you can cut the edges and crimp them. And the... Um, the pumpkin pie that we're going to serve you is just baked with the unbaked crust. You, so you put the pumpkin pie filling right in here and put it in the oven. 
and we'll be serving it to you in a few minutes. If you use a different kind of flour in the pie crust other than the oat, it is a little bit harder. It, it turns out kind of delicate when you eat it, but it's hard to cut. And, and <laughs> before I started using oat flour, when I'd go to cut it, the, the rim of it may fly at somebody. <laughs> and so it, it's much nicer to have the oat. And I don't know if many of you are familiar with um, nutritional yeast flakes. Have you, how many have used those? Yeah, quite a few. Um, it kind of gives a cheesy flavor to things. And you'll find it in cheese sauce recipes. It's good on popcorn. <laughs> it's good on a lot of things. But there's been a lot of talk about it being a neurotoxin. And a neurotoxin, it can cross the blood-brain barrier and inflame the brain. And total, if you want optimum health, you want to avoid those type of things. And Rhonda, Dr. Jim's wife, just shared this. And I had never seen this before, but I'm excited about it. You order it online, and you'll want to get a picture of it. The difference between this and the stuff you buy like at the supermarket, because you can get it bulk at Winco, the nutritional yeast, is this one is not heated. Is that right, Rhonda? Something about the heating of it changes the nature of the beast. And you know, that's true with so many things. You know, um, fats in their natural environment work entirely different in us than when we separate them out. Same with sugars. And Almost everything, when we start pulling stuff out of its natural environment, we create a whole new animal. And lots of times we don't know what that animal's doing until a few years down the road. So this one is gluten-free, um, dairy-free, obviously, and non-GMO, and not heated. So um, stop afterwards and get a picture of it. And I wanted you to know the bread that was in the loaf is the um, gluten-free bread that I had you taste last week. But the difference was last week's bread, I had could only find psyllium powder. And you want psyllium husks. Because when you cook with regular wheat or rye or barley, there's gluten in it. Gluten is the protein. And it creates elasticity which you want in your bread because it captures, it gives places for the yeast to grow. Well, when you do gluten-free, there is no, no um, elasticity. There's no gluten in there. The psyllium husk kind of fakes out the, gluten, the um, yeast a bit because of its high fiber, and it creates pockets where the yeast can expand. And so the bread that you have in here, I finally was able to find some psyllium husk, and it made it so much lighter and a, a lot better flavor. And I can share that recipe if you would like. I, it's not my recipe. It's a recipe online, and I can look on my phone and give that to you. Um, the thing we, I'm, probably you understand, we, we live in a no-free fat house. And so most, most, um, gluten-free products have fat added to them. And so this was fun to find a recipe that I didn't have to struggle or modify. It is brown rice, whole sorghum flour, whole oat flour that you grind, you know, just with your rolled oats, and it has quinoa flour. And I just ground up organic quinoa like that I buy at Costco. And um, sorghum flour I found at Viggs, is that how you say that? Um, up on, I think it's 16th in, in Lewiston. They had sorghum, and um, they also had brown rice flour. But you can grind your own rice in your blender and just do small portions of it so that you get a nice fine flour. You don't want it gritty. The other thing is, if you're not used to, quinoa is kind of strong. It has a very distinct flavor, and sometimes it can play through in your breads or in your products. This recipe had a tablespoon of maple syrup in it, salt, salima husk, and the flowers, and water. The trick in regular bread making 
if you switch from a, a white flour, a white bread, to a whole wheat, lots of people are put off by that because of what we call the tannins in the wheat. And those tannins can give a bitter taste, a strong flavor. So to compensate that in regular bread, you would re add, let's see, I'm trying to think to mine, I make four loaves, and it's about, I'm sorry, I measure everything by weight. It's about 33 grams of orange juice. So if you take this bread recipe, it makes one loaf. I would put in, take one teaspoon of the water out and put a teaspoon of the orange juice in and see if that doesn't cut that quinoa bite to it. Although we're not really minding it that much, and Arlen is not a quinoa lover. Um, and so, it's, yeah, <laughs> I didn't know you were there. But anyway, those are some, Rhonda? Yeah, you know, uh, a friend is, um, and I'm just saying this because I think it might translate over to the quinoa, she is washing her wheat before she grinds it. And what she does is she rinses and rinses it. And I don't know if you grind your own wheat or ever have. There's a lot of dirt that comes. And during Bible times, they actually did wash their wheat and spread it on their roof to dry before they ground it into flour. And she washes it and then puts it on like a Teflon sheet or something in her dehydrator, dries it, and then grinds it. And I'm thinking that might also work with the quinoa. You know, it let it dry. Although quinoa is like working with crazy marbles. It's everywhere. <laughs> okay, any other questions? I just wanted to cover those. So come and get a picture, because that's really valuable information. Okay?